Hey everybody, it's William. Welcome to Lama uh, in iRacing. Uh, today we're going to be doing a, a setup and a track guide for Lama. The setup is going to be for the Ford GT GTE car. Um, the track guide pretty much applies to everything though. Um, had a uh, friend of mine, Ian, do the uh, hot lap for this one. He's super quick around this track, so I figured that'd be the best one, and he really, really knows the track limits around here, which is worth um, quite a bit of time. So uh, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to go over the um, hot lap, um, have an exterior view of the hot lap with all of his inputs as well, so you can really see the line he takes, and also uh, going to just give a, a nice slow lap around the track kind of talking through um, where you're wanting to cut uh, just very slowly breaking it down instead of watching it kind of at speed uh, so that may uh, benefit you as well um, it is getting towards that uh, time of the year the 24 hours of Lama is going to be coming up in iRacing before too long uh, we do have a new build coming out before then so this setup uh, in this video may not work for the 24 hours of Lama as there might be some changes to the car but the iRacing Endurance uh, Lama series is racing at this track this weekend for the, I believe it's a six hour race, uh, which this setup should work for. You just need to add full fuel and reset the ride heights. Um, but if you're doing the shorter one hour iRacing Lama series races um, all week this week, uh, this is what the setup is actually made for. And uh, the conditions that we were uh, testing on are uh, based off of the ILMS uh, series that's racing this week. So anyways, uh, gonna get into the hot lap and then a, uh, a bit of a track guide uh, for you afterwards if uh, if you're interested in that. So um, yeah, I'll be back with you guys to uh, talk through the setup and then um, a little bit of a track guide, enjoy.
Alrighty, everyone, so that was Ian's hot lap. Um, he wound up with a time of a 351.647. Um, I have loaded into a, a test session completely the same conditions that he was running in. So you can see the date here, May 30th of uh, 2020 at uh, 1530. Um, static sun, so it was always the same. Uh, 79 degrees Fahrenheit uh, ambient and 119 degrees uh, for the track conditions with uh, wind at just two miles per hour. So um, those are the conditions that this was run in. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the setup here real quick. So this is uh, just basically it's always really where you're wanting to start on the GTEs, at least right now where the tire, um, the way the tire model is at the moment. Uh, might be seeing that change uh, next week potentially, but for right now, this is it. Um, not really much to talk about there. Uh, on to the uh, nitty gritty of it. So I'll go ahead and change this over just because it's a little bit easier. Uh, for ride heights, I think it's in millimeters. Um, not a whole lot to talk about other than uh, I think this is off sync because of my wheel. This should be on 6.6, six, uh, as you could see um, in the hot lap that's the traction control uh, 1 and 2. Those are the settings we've been running. So 6 and 6 for those. Uh, the brake bias. Um, you can still snatch a front wheel with it at 49.7, so if you're having trouble with that, you can move it back. Um, I know in different conditions, uh, we raced this track earlier this year in a league. Um, I was actually running at 49.1, um, and there's been some conditions where we were practicing on where I was running it um, around 50.8 and 50.4. But for this, uh, it was on 49.7 for the lap. Um, let's see... Go ahead and get this stuff down here so you can look at the rear suspension and the way it is set up. Um, if you are if you are uh, looking to do the endurance race or uh, want to do one with just a, fuel, a full tank or even if you're trying to convert this to a quali setup and you need to take some fuel out, um, that's fine. Just add the fuel down here. All you're going to need to do to adjust the ride heights is um, uh, click up or down on the torsion bar preload. Um, trying to keep it around the, these ride height values uh, for the front, 55.3 and 62 millimeters in the rear, respectively. Uh, just trying to get it as close to that as you can after you adjust your fuel load. If it's off by just a little bit, that's not going to make too much of a difference. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the ins and outs of how you do that. And uh, really, the only thing on this setup I will say is it is a uh, there's a tendency of, of uh, oversteer. We're running on one wing. Um, some people will be running it on zero, but with the way the tire wear is at the moment and, and how much it's going to uh, come into play in an hour-long race or something like that, I think a click of wing is, um, for the majority of people, going to be the safer bet. So if you are still getting that oversteer, uh, even with this uh, little bit of wing on the car, um, just lower that. Just one or two clicks. Um, try and keep it above 60 millimeters, uh, really. But if you need to go lower than that, uh, that's completely... Uh, it, it's, it's not going to do anything other than um, make the car a little bit tighter, really. And also uh, potentially actually increase your uh, straight line speed as well. So... Um, it, it's it's just it, the Porsche curves are really where you're going to feel the tightness of the car. Um, but that may be what you need to do to make it ultimately comfortable for you. Uh, so yeah, there's just that little bit in there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and look at the gearing as well as the uh, diff for you there. Um, let's see. The only other thing I can really think of to adjust on here is if you're getting uh, just like a lot of oversteer on throttle out of the slow corners, um, you might want to try three clutch plates instead of four. Uh, other than that, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. This is essentially the setup that uh, we ran, uh, like I said, we ran it earlier this year, uh, right after the new tire model actually, um, right after they, they increased the wear on the new tire model, in fact, and um, Ian actually wound up winning that race against uh, some Pretty pretty stiff competition, so 
Um, it served us well there, and uh, we've made a couple tweaks here and there from what we've been learning driving this car throughout the season. And uh, I figured I'd share it with you guys here, as it's, like I said, getting to be about that time. A lot of people are going to be racing Le Mans this week. Uh, the endurance race getting ready for the 24 hours of Le Mans uh, in a couple weeks' time now. So, um, hope you guys enjoy this setup, and uh, I'm going to head out on track now and give a short little um, track guide kind of as to the track limits and where you want to put your car at uh, a pretty slow pace. And then we'll have a, f a full speed of Ian's lap from exterior so you can really see where he's putting this car as well as his uh, inputs at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the setup. If you do, uh, feel free to share it and um, you know give a like uh, if... if uh, if uh, you can, it, it does it does help me out a lot, as well as um, um, sharing the video with your friends does help as well. But any feedback, positive or negative, in the comments below, I do read it. I do appreciate it, even if it is negative. Um, it happens. It doesn't suit everyone. I know. That's the way this stuff goes. So uh, stick around for the uh, track guide, and I'll be back with you guys momentarily. All right, everyone, so in pit lane here, we're gonna go ahead and pull out and uh, drive pretty slowly around the track, stop at a couple points and show you um, kind of the line, what you're looking for, and uh, a couple of the places that you can really cut and try and give you an idea of how far is too far um, to cut it. So through turn one here, um, you're gonna be just uh, leaving your left side tires here off on the left side of this curb but you can sit all the way over here and really open up the chicane. Um, and you can cut a lot of the chicane as well. So whenever you turn in here, uh, you need to leave your right side tires just on the curb. No further in, otherwise you're gonna get a slowdown. Um, coming to the second one, it's a little bit harsher. So for this one, you really need to be careful with making sure you leave your left side tires on the outside of the curb as you shoot out of this chicane. Aiming for these little, uh, I don't know, uh, markers here, and you can't go, um, just try and keep the car basically inside these markers. This this slowdown that you get from cutting this too much is quite harsh, and uh, something you definitely want to avoid, especially on the opening laps. It's very easy to do, though. So, um, making sure you maximize that can be worth literally like half a second if you're cutting that right. And that's where a lot of people find their time over... Uh, you know, some people are wondering how you're going so fast around this track. It's, it's really down to knowing where you can cut. So coming through this section here, you're just going to want to keep the car as close as possible to the white line on the right, and then braking into here. Uh, go through here in third, uh, typically, and use this curb on the inside. Uh, try not to get hit the grass. I think Ian did in his lap. Um, I try and avoid this curb, but Ian was using it and hopping it. You need to be careful over this uh, ridge, though. This ridge right here uh, likes to kick the car out, uh, give you some oversteer, especially on the new tire model. And I will have you know, if you touch this grass over the curb, it is uh, basically a one-way ticket into the Armco on the uh, right-hand side. So um, watch that one for sure. There's not much to cut there. It's, it's pretty straightforward on your apexes. So now you're getting into a corner that's quite tricky. Um, you're going to throw the car in here, and once again, left side tires just outside of the curb, right? And uh, f you're going to fly out over here if you do it correctly, and you need to get the car back. Let me back up here. You need to get the car back inside the white line before the end of this curb right here. So you can be out, you can be out here. Um, in these lines, if you need, if, if uh, you're running a little bit wide, you can have the car all the way out here. But by the time those lines in, you need to be on the curb, and by the time this curb ends, you need to have at least two of your tires back inside that white line on the left. Now you're going down the uh, straight, there's really not much to talk about for this little bit. So, uh, you're driving down the straight, it doesn't really matter. Um, it used to be worth quite a bit to run right down the middle of the track. That doesn't really seem to be the case anymore. So uh, you can go ahead and establish your line pretty early or block if you need to. You're not going to give it too much away. And as we come up to the first chicane here, you're going to be looking for... This is where I notice that I need to start breaking is this yellow um, bit on the Armco 
on the left right here in this cutout. So once I pass this cutout, that is basically my braking zone, right before it. So um, a good marker if you're trying to overtake someone is that little sign. Uh, you can see it right, uh, right here, right before the 100 board. Uh, you need to be braking before the sign, basically, if you're going to make this corner. So it's always good for uh, these these passing zones, especially, to um, kind of have an idea of where you want to brake on both the left and the right. So again, you're looking for... Uh, it's back here somewhere. This cutout. This yellow and then this cutout. Uh, just past this cutout, there's a sign on the right. And then there's another sign as you get right up to the uh, 100 board on the right as well. And this cone is also very important. You can be all the way over here, uh, but once you get to this cone, you need to have at least two of your tires on the inside of the white line. And going into the first chicane, you can cut quite a bit of this. Once again, uh, it's going to be kind of common for me to say at least two tires inside the uh, white line. Same whenever you cut it back two tires inside the white line and really straighten the car out over here. You can have all four of your uh, tires outside of the white line on the exit here, but you need to maintain two tires on the uh, left side of this curb. So hop this curb and drive the car straight out of the corner. Whenever you really nail that, it, it does help quite a bit with your exit speed, which that's what these are all about. They're all about your exit speed carrying that all the way down these straightaways. And uh, whether you're trying to pass someone, pull them off, whatever, um, that's very crucial. So we're gonna come up to the second chicane here. This braking zone is quite a bit trickier. Uh, it's not so bad during the daylight, but it is absolutely awful <laughs> at night. So you can see the one, or the 300, the 200, and then the 100 board. So you see the 100 board and you see these big trees off to the right. Um, that very last tree is my breaking point. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side, there is a telephone pole. Uh, hopefully you can see that in front, directly in front of the car right now. That would be my breaking point if I was on the inside of a car going into this last chicane. So you're going to hit these trees and break um, all the way into here. Once again, same deal with the cone. You can be all the way over, but once you get to the cone, you need to have at least two wheels on the inside of that white line. You can cut all of this just keeping two tires on the right side, or on, yeah, on the right side of the curb. And then same here, two tires on the left side of the curb. And same for the exit. Don't worry about the white line, just keep two tires outside of the curb. And then that'll launch you all the way down into the end of the uh, Mulsanne straight here. To Mulsanne Corner, I believe. So as you get down into Mulsanne Corner, this is probably one of the easiest braking zones to spot, but also um, very, very easy to mess up. So you want to start all the way over here for this cone. Same deal with these cones. You, you've got to uh, I obliterate that cone, but you've got to at least have two of your tires on the inside of the white line once you get to that cone. And then you're going to look for this um, rumble strip here. So I'm braking just before the rumble strip um, and it's it's kind of a different line so I'll try and actually approach it the way I would normally so you can kind of get an idea. You're going to come up to it from where the cone is. Aim for the rumble strip. Yeah see I was over past where I should have been. Uh, from where the cone is and that's why that slowdown popped up and then you go from that rumble strip to this cone from this cone you cut once again two of your uh, left side tires in this case on the left side of the curb and you can cut so much of that corner and jump all the way out to the edge of the gravel through that corner that leads you down into Indianapolis this is uh, by far trickiest part of the track for me so just taking the shortest way around here just curb to curb basically and the Toyota hybrid sign that means Indianapolis is coming up next you're going to
you're going to see these signs with the lights, 200, 100. 100 is a great indicator because it's right before this uh, astroturf on the left. So this astroturf is where I would dab the brakes and ship down to 5th if we were at full speed. So dab the brakes, ship down to 5th, really hit this inside here, straighten the car out, and you're on the brakes basically immediately. So this zone is very easy to lose the rear of the car, just clipping that curb on the inside. You don't want to be over the curb there though, because that will really, really unsettle the car. So just clipping that curb on the inside and shooting over to this curb on the right, uh, just trying to stay out of the uh, sand there on the left. Now this corner is kind of tricky. Um, not really a good braking marker for it uh, exactly. I, I'm just trying to break a certain point before the 50, so um, like I said, there's not really a good marker. There's some lines on the road. Typically I'm braking at these uh, little rubber lines that are kind of running um, perpendicular to the red on the side, and the cone, once again, is going to come into play here. So you can actually be all the way over here coming into this corner. And the idea here is to have your left side tires on the left side of this curb, and your right side tires on the right side of this curb. If you get your left side tires on this curb, you're probably going to lock up. And if you have your right side tires on this curb, you're too far over and you're going to get a slowdown. So just like this, braking right over as you straddle the curb, and then turning in and really absolutely clobbering and cutting that curb on the right there. And then try not to get the grass, I think Ian did in his lap on the exit there. And that's gonna lead you all the way into the Porsche S's, which for this section, you just wanna keep a nice straight line the shortest distance possible around this track. So I just hold the inside and basically drive this dotted line on the uh, left side of the track. And you're gonna see the 200, the 100 on the left, and then you're going to see this AstroTurf. So two tires just on the AstroTurf. That's a great braking point and turn in. So you're going to turn in, try and hit this curb, and keep the car over to the right. You really want to sacrifice that one to set this whole section up. So you clip that, come all the way out to the wall, probably breathe out of the throttle here, clip this, and then a late turn in to the curb. You're probably on and off the throttle through here and then really sacrifice that one too because this one you got to turn the car in early way earlier than i did there let's try and actually get that a little bit better so you can kind of see what it's like oh got an off track in reverse all right so yeah you're coming through this section and you're really just wanting to make sure that you sacrifice i'm not sure how i lost control there game you're really wanting to make sure that you sacrifice this one. Keep the car as far to the right as possible, because basically the second that straightens out, you already need to be turning in through here. You can cut, just making sure you keep your right hand, your right side tires on the um, right side of this whole curb through here, and it is almost certainly going to shoot you right straight into here. Now this section is where I almost always get uh, an off track if I'm getting an off track on the lap. So on the exit of the Porsche curbs here, you can see this curb and the uh, little bumps off to the right of the curb. You can be on this section all the way out here. You can be all the way on the right side of the white line and the curb, but the second that curb ends, you have to have two of your uh, left side tires over on the left side of it. That is, uh, I think it's like a second and a half slowdown at pace. So um, that's definitely one to watch. And then just once again, the shortest line coming up to the Ford Chicane. As you come up to the Ford Chicane, the pit entry is basically the best marker. So you're looking this dotted line, put the car just slightly over it, uh, kind of straddling the dotted line and about as I get to one hash left in front of me, uh, just like that, that's the braking point. And you're braking just barely, um, throwing the car in here early, half a car over, half a car over, just leaving your uh, left or right side tires out. And then this you can cut, same, same deal, half a car, and then basically half a car. 
that slowdown, if you go more than that, if you're putting your entire car over those curbs, uh, that is like a three second slowdown through that section and uh, absolutely kill you. So uh, just make sure if you're doing this, you're really trying to push the track limits. You need to kind of have an idea of what you can get away with and be comfortable with it. Don't don't try and push it. Uh, don't try and push the issue anymore. But there is a lot of time in cutting these corners this way. Uh, but you got to remember, it is just as easy to get a slowdown and kind of throw it all the way there. So uh, we'll go ahead and run through turn one real quick since uh, we came out of the pits and didn't really get to do that. But um, through turn one, you're just going to stay as far left as possible. You're going to go across onto this stuff. You can go all the way out to the sand here. Um, and you'll be fine. And then cut the car in one set of your tires off on the uh, left of that white line and then turn in early cut all of that chicane cut all of this chicane and just make sure you stay inside of those um, those markers on the uh, left there so that's basically how to get around here um, the little ins and outs of how to cut and uh, really just ultimately what you need to um, what you need to keep an eye out for whenever you're trying to maximize your line around this track. Like I said, there's a lot of time in cutting it, but uh, just be careful with those slowdowns. And uh, remember, if you're, you're talking about gaining tenths of a second, but if you're getting a slowdown basically every single time you attempt it or something like that, uh, it's easier just to back it off. Uh, you don't get that time back for sure. So. Um, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, if it does, let me know. If you want to see more stuff like this, um, also let me know. If you never, ever, ever want to see something like this again, uh, you can let me know in the comments below as well. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll play the uh, full speed uh, replay of this one, um, or of Ian's lap, rather, so you can really see it at speed. It, it, it's a lot easier to understand at speed, but uh, talking it through might help some people as well so um yeah thanks for watching and i will catch you on the next one